Welcome to Kyra Author Insights. I'm with Beth Lambert and this is actually a really exciting opportunity for me to talk with somebody who's not only an incredible author and has made an amazing impact in the health of families, somebody who's got a real passion for changing the lives of families and communities and her character and her vision is so compelling that I think it's not only an interest in learning about her process of writing a book and the experience that's had, but also the insights into the mind of a person who wants to make changes in the world. So this, for me, is going to be a really amazing opportunity to speak with uh, somebody I know who's passionate about what they do. But firstly, Beth is the author of what I think is an essential family book, A Compromised Generation, and co-author of Brain Under Attack, which is a resource uh, for parents and caregivers with children with PANS, PANDAS, and autoimmune encephalitis. I think in addition to being the author, it's important to know some background about Beth with who is the founder and director of Epidemic Answers, which is a non-profit uh, dedicated to re-establishing vibrant health in children. And I think something that is really very close to my heart, and I've spoken with a number of people also involved with this now, which is an incredible project, and which is the executive producer of Documenting Hope, um, which is you know, destined to, in my mind, have a massive impact on uh, health challenges, particularly epidemics for our children um, who suffer from lifelong chronic illness. So an incredible advocate, for children, for healing, for health. Beth, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. So happy to be with you. Now, as I said, there's, you do so much, but I do want today to talk about your book so that people can have an insight to what it takes to write a book, what it means to have written a book. So tell me a little bit about, um, you, you've co-authored and authored a book. Tell me a little bit about those books and, and the message of those books. Sure, so my first book was published in 2010 and it's called The Compromised Generation. Uh, and the focus of that back book is the epidemic of chronic illness in America's children, which, as you know, is not uh, exclusive to America. It just happens to be that some of the sickest kids are in the United States. But it's really a phenomenon around the world, as you know. Um, and so that book looks at the environmental factors, all the things that are contributing to the epidemics of autism, ADHD, asthma, allergies, obesity, um, and, and, and how we got to this place. Um, and um, the second book is a, is a follow-on, and it really came out of the work I do through Epidemic Answers. Um, with Epidemic Answers, we try to uh, educate parents about these epidemics, but also about what you can do to help reverse these conditions in kids, both prevent and reverse them. Because many people don't know that you can reverse something like autism, or you can reverse type 2 diabetes or life-threatening allergies even. So um, out of that work, we started meeting more and more parents who children are getting diagnosed with PANS or PANDAS, which are acronyms for basically um, these conditions that are affecting their brain in an, in an autoimmune encephalitis. Um, and we just felt like there weren't any resources out there for parents. So um, we got together, and, and, and I'm a co-author on that book because I worked with some, um, some of my colleagues on that. And we pulled together um, a resource for parents, and, and we did that through interviewing uh, different kinds of practitioners who treat kids with pans and pandas. And, you know, it provides some advice and guidance. Because um, truly, when you have most kids going out there, uh, getting a diagnosis with pans or pandas, and they end up, you know, seeing an immunologist or a psychiatrist or, you know, something, and they're not really getting a lot of help, so these parents are stuck. So we felt an urgency, actually, to, to write that book, because um, we felt like parents needed it. Yeah, that's, I, I love the word you just said there, there's an urgency to write that book because, because parents need it, the community needs to understand what's taking place. So what was the initial impetus to write that book? You said there's an urgency, but there's a, there's a leap between, I know that people need this, there's, there's a message that I need to share, there's a community that needs to understand more. But to go from that point of that sense of urgency to, okay, we need to actually put this down on print, how did it translate into that? you know, that ability, that desire, and that capacity to write the book? Well, I just think, you know, if you're somebody who has an idea in your head or you know something and you find yourself talking about it again and again and again to people and, you know, you tell somebody, don't you know about that there's rising cases of ADHD and, hey, don't, why are there so many kids with life-threatening food allergies? Or, hey, do you know all these kids are suffering from pants? And you find yourself saying these things over and over again. There gets to be a point when you're like, I should just write this down you know and the more you research and you actually decide and commit to the idea that i'm going to write a book about this the more um naturally it flows because um you know you create a structure for yourself i'm gonna write a book so what, what what are the components of the book well i know i need to introduce this topic i know i need to provide some background i know i need to do some research to get some statistics or whatever the pieces are so it kind of naturally flows but i really think it all just comes from this place of like 
I keep talking about this. I care a lot about this topic and people need to know about it. So I'm going to, I'm just going to write it down. I mean, that's really where it starts from. It's just the commitment to do it. And then you just start writing, you know, somewhere and organizing your thoughts. Um, and I also was somebody who I loved school. I'm like a, such a nerd and I love reading and I love researching. And um, I was actually in graduate school when I wrote my first book. Um, so I was in that, I was also in that kind of mode of writing. Uh, for my second book, it was not, but I still love that, um, the process of reading and researching and really getting to know something well. Um, and it, so if you're the type of person who really loves just sort of rolling up your sleeves and, and learning more and researching, you know, it's just sort of a natural evolution to, to start writing because it's just, I want to share everything I know. That's a really compelling kind of, you know, feature of that process. And it's beautiful. And, and you, you obviously, some people find it easier to write, other people not as easy. And you fall in that category where there is some natural tendency to be able to do that. So what is what was your process? You've obviously said, you know, you've, you've created these structures and you've moved through the specific process, but and you were in that zone. But was there anything you did that made for you um, that maybe helped for others the book writing process? Because again, leaping from idea, now you've said, okay, I'm, I'm going to put that, I'm going to commit to that and put those ideas and thoughts and the answers the questions I have on paper but it's another step again to go into that I'm going to write this and have you got any thoughts insights about what you did to make that an easier process for you yeah definitely because I, I'm already sort of working on my next book in my mind and when I have an idea where I go is um, you know a couple of places I'll, I'll, I'll do folders on my computer right where I'll, I'll set up a folder with a topic and then you know I'll start throwing pieces of information into that folder you know maybe something I jolt down on a word document and then put it into that folder or maybe I read a research article and I'll save that into that you know that folder on my computer um, you know the other thing that I've done um, when I've been writing more sciencey is um, you know cre keeping tabs um, and sorting and organizing all the research I read there's so much there's just massive volumes of, of you know, medical and scientific literature out there. And, you know, you can be reading and researching, but if you don't store it and um, store it in places and organize it in places, you're going to, it's going to drive you crazy because you're going to be like, wait, where was that statistic I read about ADHD and zinc deficiency? I got to find that, you know? So it's really about storing and organizing your thoughts and your research and the things that you're finding. I mean, some people do it on notepads, um, but I, you know, I find there's so many great tools right now that do the organizing for you. When I was writing my book um, almost 10 years ago, uh, my first book, it was, I was using a computer application that's not even available anymore. I think it's, you know, obsolete, but there's, but my point is just that there, you know, there's constantly an evolution of amazing research and writing tools and software. And um, right now I'm using Zotero, which is a, um, you know, it's just an application where you can save research, medical and scientific research articles and put them into folders and it just helps keep you organized. So, you know, by the time you start gathering enough information, you can almost put together a table of contents, you know, sort of an outline of what you think you want to write about and then continue to sort the information. And that's really the process that I've always used. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like, you know, it depends on the type of book you're writing, but when it's more um, research based, that organization is, is, is key, the folders and the files and the, you know, just keeping track of everything that you find. Yeah, that's brilliant. And so you, you've gone through, you've organized yourself, you've got the content onto the page. We're gonna to jump to a point because of, uh, of having been published, because I wanna talk also about the impact that it's had in, in your community and, and also for your business and what it's meant for you personally. So the book, you write the book, you publish the book, you, it becomes your message, it becomes your way to share and a hope uh, in the world. So how was it received when you, when people started to be aware of the significance of these epidemics um, and the impact it's having on people's lives? How was that book received? Well, I think I definitely got some um, parents who contacted me saying I had no idea um, that it was this bad. But the thing that I found was gratifying after the book was published was that there were people who contacted me and said, not just I didn't, I had no idea it was so bad in terms of the number of impacted kids, but I had no idea there was solutions. And um, that was extremely gratifying for me because it said to me that, you know, sometimes you know, I've been in this work for, you know, over a decade. And um, the, the most important piece, I think, for, for families who are, you know, going on that journey of healing their kids is mindset, right? So if you walk into a physician's office and the physician says, I'm sorry, 
um, your child has this diagnosis. We don't know why he has it. He's always going to be this way. You hear things like that and it just sort of shut, shuts you down. It doesn't give you any possibilities or any options. And then you just look to manage it, right? And deal with your own stress dealing with it. That's no way to live. Like that's not, that's not even true. So I feel like if, you know, if my book had the um, opportunity to get into the hands of a parent who said there's possibility for your child, because my book also has um, a series of stories of kids who've gotten all the way better from these conditions. So if I was able to sort of plant the seed in the mind of, of a parent and says, well, your child has autism, well, maybe they don't always have to have autism. That is the most important part for me because it's setting the mindset in the right direction, right? Like it's giving that hope and that possibility to the parents where they might not have had it otherwise. So when I first published my book, I definitely got a few stories of people like, I didn't know this existed. Can you suggest some doctors that I can work with? Or can you suggest some other resources where I can get on this journey? And, and that's also why I started Epidemic Answers was because I felt like, you know, you can write a book, but you know, you've got to take that message even further and, and get the, the resources out to people. So the book almost becomes like a calling card and here's what I have to say. But then it's important, I think, to build off of that too um, and, and, and provide more because people always want more. You know, if they like what you've written and like, like, they like what you've said, I feel like they always want more. Beautiful. And, and there is always room for more space in all of the environments because they are looking for continuing answers. They, they like to go deeper on the journey. You, you think about a, a, yeah, a movie that becomes a series or a, or a, a Netflix um, series as well. You don't just watch the first. There's, there's a story that unfolds as a depth from... The continuing watching that takes place and the same is true for reading you read in the same genre multiple authors but deeper from the same author as well so you have that opportunity to connect with them once you share that message and, and take them to a deeper level of understanding and therefore greater capacity for hope because the more they go deeper into the experience with you the greater capacity they have for the change that's necessary to bring about the results that will transform their lives so i think um, you, you shared that so beautifully and elegantly as well you you spoke about the, the people reaching out to you and you know saying i didn't know that this hope even existed so and you said that was very gratifying tell me one of those stories and, and how that touched you um that you know you, you write this book and people reach out but the, but how did it, how does it lead to transformation in the person's life it's, it's one thing is having an understanding that we can have now have hope it also means that it impacts lives so i'd love to hear a story like that yeah my favorite is um i gave a, a book talk uh one time at a library in connecticut and so I'm sitting in this library auditorium telling the parents about my book and sort of talking about the new childhood epidemics. And I was sharing some re recovery stories and giving some tips and ideas on how parents have done this and how they can do this for themselves. I didn't know at the time there was a woman sitting in the audience. She came up and you know, said a few things to me and I, I signed a book and I didn't, didn't really think anything of it. We ended up getting connected later. And it turns out that that, that day when, when she was sitting in the audience, you know, she was dealing, she was in what I would call the pit of despair with her child. Her son had, um, you know, he was labeled with ADHD, but he was having, you know, severe uh, behavioral issues, learning problems. He was depressed. He was anxious. He had um, life-threatening food allergies. Like just, he was just a mess. I mean, I think she would use those terms. Um, and she was beside herself and she sat in the audience. This is all coming from her later. She was telling me that she was sitting in the audience and, and, and was like light bulbs going off, like, oh my gosh, I didn't know this was possible. I, like, could this happen for my kid? So it turns out she ended up um, going to see some of the very same doctors that I um, had mentioned in my book. And she ended up getting on this road to recovery for her son and she fully reversed his diagnosis, got him off all his prescription medications. He had asthma, he was on you know different kinds of steroid medications. He was on, um, you know, all these kinds of medical things that weren't helping him, she got him off all of those, got him to lose his diagnosis, his symptoms. And then she ended up writing a book um, with her son um, and about that recovery journey. So she has a book out there now that she wrote with her son. It's, a, it's like a cartoon uh, book and written for kids. And he basically was, it, the story is about how he's once was really miserable and, and sad and sick and he felt terrible. And then he changed his diet and he took some of the toxins out of his environment. He saw, you know, like a, this kind of doctor that helped them. And then he got better and he's, he's straight A student and he's doing great. It's an inspiring book that she wrote, but like that is my favorite um, 
you know, I, I just, my favorite story of um, the light bulb that goes off for the parent, the possibility is there and then they take it and run with it. You know, that she's, she's a, she's an amazing committed mom and she's a dear friend of mine now. Um, and I just feel so um, grateful that we had the opportunity to connect that one day because it meant something I think for, for her family. So uh, that's my favorite story. I wish there were more like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no doubt be more coming and you've got another book coming, as you said. So the opportunity to outreach to serve the impact continues. And uh, that's a beautiful story. It really does highlight just, you know, even if you change one life, it's enough. But this happens, you know, more often than we probably give credit to. And you don't even know all the impact that you've had because not everybody always tells you their stories. So that's a beautiful thing about writing a book is the change that happens. And obviously it changes people's lives. You have these you know, beautiful stories and the impact that it has. How has it changed your life in terms of either your business or personally what you're, where you've redirected your efforts or energies or the opportunities that have come? Yeah, it's completely changed my life. I mean, I, um, I think writing my book gave me a 180. I just turned directions totally in what I was doing. And uh, it's become my purpose. I mean, it's, you know, the book was sort of a, a launching pad, but like I said before, it didn't feel like it was enough to just write the book, but it has, um, you know, served as my calling card and my ability to say to somebody, here's what I'm about. Here's what I've researched. Here's what I believe. But um, now I'm doing all these other things. So like I mentioned, I, I started a nonprofit organization and I'm working on um, a, research, a couple of research projects through the Documenting Hope Project. So it really has just sort of catapulted me into this greater body of work. I never anticipated that, but it's the same kind of thing of like unseen and understanding that there's a need. So as I was taking my book out into the world and sharing these anecdotal stories of recovery, people would say, oh, that's nice. Those are anecdotes. And I'd say, huh, okay, so you need science behind this. I see. Okay, I'll do that. So now I've teamed up with some scientists and researchers to actually demonstrate that recovery is possible and to better understand the environmental factors that are synergistically and cumulatively um, working together to impact our kids in these ways. So I feel like it um, opened up so many doors for me. It's created a career, it's created a, a life's purpose, um, but it, I, it wouldn't have um, started if I didn't just get that book done, if I just didn't just get it started and, and, and push it out. Beautiful, I think that's, that's, that's a great way to end. If you've got one piece of advice for people out there saying, I'd like to jumpstart my career or extend my influence or have a greater impact or quantify my purpose in a way, I'm, I don't know whether I can write a book. I'm not sure if this is the best avenue to take. What would you say to them so that they can you know, know that there is a pathway, a possibility and, and, and an opportunity for them as well? And I, my one piece of advice, it's the same thing I tell parents, but it's a different context, which is mindset. So if you feel like you have something to say, have confidence that you have something to say and that people will care. I mean, I guarantee you, it doesn't matter how you publish it or what your you know, distribution channel, somebody out there cares what you have to say, but you have to believe that first and you have to be confident enough in it, right? And the other thing is like, let your ego go. You know, like I had, I wrote my book and it was like vitriolic, angry against the conventional medical establishment because there's all these kinds of things, you know, pharmaceuticals that are harming kids and interventions that are harming kids. And I remember coming from that place of anger and I spewed that out into my first iteration of my book. And then I had a physician um, who was my medical um, advisor or edit, medical editor. And she read my book. And she was basically checking to make sure that I had, um, you know, all my facts correct, my medical facts correct. Um, and she was like, why are you so angry? I was like, angry? I didn't even notice I had anger in there, right? But it took that process of sort of like letting my ego go and just sort of coming from a place of humility. And I ended up having multiple editors who read my book from different perspectives. I totally changed the um the tone and and the voice of the book because of their input but i think it, you have to kind of let your ego go and you kind of have to let um come from that place of humility that like what i have to say is important but i'm going to take advice from other people who um, might help me shape this into something that's really impactful that's beautiful thank you beth you have uh, made such a profound impact in the world uh, I love what you're doing with the Documenting Hope Project. Epidemic Answers provides incredible solutions for people to give them an opportunity and your books are a central reading for families um, to understand how to end the, this battle against chronic illness and you are offering real and powerful solutions, lasting solutions, and you are an incredible servant of humanity. Thank you for your time. I appreciate your message and I appreciate you. Oh, thank you. <laughs>